and uh, the most recent blog which he wrote what you need to know about the COVID-19 vaccine where Bill Gates has uh, you know defined it even you know the world is creating this vaccine on a start Welcome to the Otech Talks podcast, where it's all about working on technologies. You will hear the latest tech information, and your host, Kashif Manzor, brings together product overviews, how tos, best practices, tips and tricks, and troubleshooting techniques. Welcome to Otech Talks podcast. This is session number 70. and we will continue our session with the guest speakers and today we have another guest speaker who's going to join us to present a new topic if you're new to the show open tech talks is your weekly sandbox for technology insights experimentation and inspiration with the primary objective of learning and sharing to so, you know the objective of all is doing is to share and learn from each other and to achieve this from last 60 70 sessions i was doing myself number of sessions on um, ranging from technical topic to digital transformation topic and uh, now we have started inviting number of guest speakers actually number of friends colleagues have approached me and i thought let me start this part also and then we will be going to have a lot of tech gurus founders of startups companies cios cfos CXOs to share their knowledge with us and you know their expertise. Now before we will go to our topic of today and we will invite our guest speaker. I just wanted to you know we all from last two months even living in a new era which is a new normal whatever we call it. It's uh, this covid-19 and most of our working from homes we all pray for for the lives and the people and our friends our colleagues have you know countered number of challenges and who have lost their loved ones our pray for them our pray for all of for all of of them which we we can from here with respect to covid-19 i think uh, i would suggest you the best uh, source is who no doubt there is to get the more knowledge and information and uh, there's another source i have uh, got a chance to read uh, that's basically gate gatesnotes.com it's the blog from bill gates and uh, the most recent blog which he wrote what you need to know about the covid-19 vaccine where bill gates has uh, you know defined it even you know the world is creating this vaccine on a historically fast timeline and all the options what are the options available how soon will a vaccine be ready even you know he categorized with a very detailed chart and it's not about availability it's about that okay how vaccine a vaccine can be delivered to 7 billion people and then there are dozens of candidates in the pipeline what type of vaccines are available how what is the progress on that so this is i like uh, the whole uh, the block and if you want to get information that one why my suggestion is to go to gatesnotes.com and you will get this block and we'll also put in the show notes and if you don't know that, then you can visit just otechtalks.tv this session number 70 under the podcast menu and you will get all the links to that one and then there was another blog from again bill gates that was written on april 24 the first modern pandemic short read uh, so we i think there was another topic if the both it's a short and a long read it's around 24 i think or 24 or 30 minutes uh, session where he described numbers which we are facing or we talking about from what governments need to do how we can stop it you know and then differences between among different countries what we need to learn and even on the kids foundation role and then the innovation to beat the enemy from treatments to vaccines and to even testing and then tracking contact tracing basically this is all 
and then the opening up so he has given his own thoughts that was a wonderful read and i think uh, whoever want to get more information on that one he should read these two blogs our praise of for all of of all of us and let's hope that we will get over quickly and uh, i think number of countries have started opening up the the businesses and we hope that we will be back soon now let's go back to our topic uh, which we are going to invite and i think before inviting our guest of today let me give you another brief on our podcast and if you are new to the podcast and you want to learn on the digital transformation you are just a beginner you want a playbook it start we have covered almost 30 plus sessions on the digital transformation starting from very basics to why it is required how to do you start how to overcome the challenges what is for me what is architecture role how business need to perform where to start in organizations all these topics are available what you need to do as in you know first 100 days how to do a digital maturity assessment digital transformation expectation versus reality and even what is going to happen with the during this covid 19 digital transformation acceleration and if as you are quarantine and you're staying home you can go and you can access uh, there are seven courses available on the digital transformation which you're going to start today and you learn while you are at home that is something on the on the digital transformation topics and now we started inviting a number of guests and during our last session which was 69 we have invited a startup founder which was on the e-commerce platform and he has shared his learning his lessons his failure with us today we have our guest speaker meer sayed hassan meer sayed hassan is an oracle a oracle ace associate is an oracle dba and he's going to cover with us multi tenant oracle database multi tenant architecture and tips based on speakers basically based on his experience and let's go to the show note uh, let's to the show and we'll invite our speaker welcome to o tech talks podcast today this is a special session because we have a guest with us and we are going to talk to our guest and we will ask him some questions and he's going to present a very technical topic on the oracle database multi tenant architecture that's you know very close to me and being started career in oracle database i i always go back and uh, you know love the topic and as you are aware about our session or if you're new to the podcast Open Tech Talks is your weekly sandbox for technology insights, experimentation, and inspiration, with the primary objective of learning and sharing. So let's welcome our guest speaker today, who's going to talk and share his knowledge with us. And our guest speaker is Meer Sayed Hassan, who's going to join us on the remote session to share us. So Meer Sayed, hi Meer Sayed, this is Kashif. Thank you so much for joining with us. So can you, before starting our session, can you introduce yourself to our audience, or can you give some brief about yourself? Uh, hello everyone. Very good evening to dear listeners. I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Otech Talk TV channels and special thanks to Mr. Kashif Mansur for organizing this podcast. Let me introduce myself. I'm Mir Said Hassan, an Oracle AC associate. I was born and brought up in Bangalore, India, and completed my uh, the Bachelor of Engineering in Information Technology from the Oxford College of Engineering, Bangalore. I started my career as an Oracle DBA technology. Currently, I'm having a, a decade of an uh, Oracle DBA experiences and worked with the various IT organizations such as the Oracle Corporations, client with the uh, Indian Software, uh, India Private Limited, an idea system, McAfee. Now, currently, I'm working as a uh, senior Oracle DBA at uh, Fana Payment. I have done uh, various uh, Oracle certified professional versions, such as the Oracle 9i, 10g, 11g, and 12c. Those all is OCP and individual version I've done with the OCP. So this year on February 2020, I'm proud to announce among us the top 10 IT professionals from India. to receive the oracle ac associate award from the oracle corporation usa 
with the uh, Oracle AC program. As you know, this award was chosen officially by an Oracle for my technical excellences and uh, networthy contributions to the Oracle technical community. I maintain a prominent blog as www.mirsayethasan.com. That is uh, nothing but my name itself as mirsaidhasan.com. So this blog involves uh, sharing my immense knowledge based on the real-time experiences with the best practices for the enhancement in an Oracle DBA and uh, the Oracle communities across the globe. Thank so you. So whereas, uh, one more thing which I wanted to mention yeah, is, uh, uh, whereas this blog includes uh, various topics such as the Oracle database installation, database creation, Arman, that is uh, what we use for the backup and recovery purpose, data pump we use for export and import operations, and data guard uh, which is used for the primary, an ASM rack upgrade, and uh, we used to upgrade from the lower version to higher version, and the flashback Oracle Enterprise Manager, OGG, and uh, various uh, troubleshooting DB activities, and uh, on a daily uh, ORA error we used to solve uh, on this. And almost I have uh, written 150 plus articles on this Oracle DB technology in a different scenario, and every article uh, posted here is tested and verified in my test environment by myself. And uh, this is uh, completely uh, free for uh, knowledge sharing in an Oracle uh, technical communities. So those who are listening to this podcast request you to review my blog where almost 50,000 users are accessing my blog for references on a daily DB activities. And also you can find me on Oracle uh, OTN, that is Oracle uh, Technology Network and ODTUG, Feedspot, Blogspot and other Oracle technical community forums. Therefore, I conclude this a short overview of my career and experiences with the otechtalk.tv channel. Thank you so much, Mirza. I think excellent. So uh, just a quick couple of questions on this. So when did you start writing your blog? How long? I you... started writing a blog on 2017. Very good, 2017. Okay. So is it is it helping you to learn, improve yourself or... How, what inspired you to keep writing it? Uh, first, before I uh, wanted to start this blog, uh, I uh, used to refer the various other blogs when we are working as a, a DBA, when we used to face some issues. When we, uh, so at that particular time, uh, I thought, why can't I do it myself? You know, whatever I'm trying to resolve on my own, you know, whatever I'm trying to uh, uh, make it, why can't you make it my own documentation? So that will be useful for myself and also it will be useful for those who are uh, uh, new to this uh, DBA technologies. And it is uh, one of the, the best way of sharing the knowledge. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Mir Sayed, You're most welcome. for sharing. Now, I think let's go to our today's topic, which is Oracle Database Multi-Tenant Architecture. So now stage is with you. Feel free to present your topic to our listener so that they can get benefit out of this topic. And then we will go a couple of more questions at the end of the session that, okay, if a new career joiner or if a new from a college graduate, if you want to start the career in technology and especially in Oracle, what he needs to do or maybe he needs to. So we will talk later on. So okay, over to you for, for the multi-channel database topic. Okay, the topic I'm going to discuss is an uh, Oracle database multi-talent architecture for uh, the CDB and PDBs. So before I proceed further, uh, so I just wanted to uh, share some of the scenarios. So let us first consider as a, one of the scenario as uh, where we have uh, 10 databases or we have a more databases that are required uh, to get upgrade or we need to apply the patches or we need to clone the database. So in that scenario, how would uh, you do it, you know? So whereas in the previous version, whereas in the previous version of the Oracle 12C, so we used to perform on an every individual databases, right? Yes, of course, right. it is every right. individual databases. So because of uh, the time consuming and also uh, the every databases we need to apply and there is a lot of uh, DB efforts came into picture. So to work on this, uh, we have that uh, the Oracle multi-tenant uh, architecture. This is one of the scenarios. 
So the other scenario which I wanted to discuss is, uh, as we know very well uh, about the previous version of the Oracle database, which is of 9i, 10g, and 11g. Right. So every database has its own uh, the component as an Oracle instance and Oracle database. So whereas an Oracle instance, again, it is comprises of the, uh, the memory structure and background process for an each and every individual databases. But I don't want to go deep onto this particular uh, memory structure and the background process of the architecture of the Oracle database as a base fundamental. So we were almost aware of it. So uh, in this case, what we have, um, what I wanted to mention is, uh, so every individual database, is, as you consider as a pre-version of the Oracle 12C, so example, if it is 11G or if it is a 10, 10G, so if you have a, one of the databases as a, the warehouse database, or if you have a, right. another database as a HR database, right. so in this particular database, uh, uh, each and every database uh, will be shared, uh, uh, will not be shared here. The memory structure and the background process will not be shared. It is for an individual for own uh, the database itself. Right. 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 So to, overcome, to overcome the solutions, uh, that's where the Oracle 12C multi-tenant uh, features came into picture. And this is one of the biggest change in an Oracle database uh, architecture since it is on Oracle uh, 9i or 10G or 11G. Right. So uh, the Oracle uh, multi-tenant uh, architecture is... Uh, the one which is uh, used to support the the cloud infrastructure, and uh, as you know, uh, the cloud infrastructure came into picture on uh, the Oracle 12C, which is a multi-tenant architecture, and also the consolidation strategy. So when I say here as a, a consolidation strategy, the consolidation strategy it means what? It 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 is nothing but as in uh, whatever the the exceptional of a database users or bring all their heterogeneous data environment into a single platform. So when I say it is a consolidation, again, the consolidations does not ensure the uh, efficient consumptions of resources, but it is also the cost effective manner. So right. where we are going to uh, have uh, the, the, the lot of uh, the cost effective model on the multi-tenant architecture. So let me uh, overview of the multi-talent architectures. As so far, what we have seen is uh, we have seen that how the uh, the, uh, the 11G and how the previous version of the 12C came into picture and uh, the, what is the benefit of the, uh, the Oracle 12C multi-talent architecture. Now I'm going to go with the, uh, the multi-talent architectures. So multi-talent architectures is, is a single container. Yeah? We have the CDB. We call it as CDB. That is as a container database right so container in this container database, database uh, to shelter the multiple other container that is as a pluggable databases so when i say it is a multiple uh, pluggable databases what does it mean so in a one particular container database where we can have the multiple pluggable databases here mm -hmm. right so this is the main uh, the advantages the of the, the the container uh, database and uh, it's worth mentioning uh, into pluggable databases are fully compatible with the, the non-CDB. It acts as a completely as a non-CDB. So okay. then again, uh, there's a one more uh, concept which I wanted to explore here is as uh, multi-tenant uh, options that helps accomplish to the various uh, operations. So various operations such as the high consolidation density. So when I say it is a high consolidation density, it means what? It is uh, the, the shared memory and the background process. As I've discussed before, the sh it is uh, the multi-tenant architecture will be a shared memory and the background process. So the whatever the, uh, the, the uh, PDBs we have on under the container database, so it will be shared and it is not individual for their uh, the, uh, the PDBs. Okay, right. So provisioning. Mm, provisioning yeah, benefit. Mm -hmm. Provisioning. Provisioning benefit is the uh, unplugging uh, from the one environment to another environment. So uh, where we can able to plug the one pluggable database and we can able to plug it to another uh, the container database. And the patching and upgrading. Patching and upgrading, as I said, uh, the you, you don't need to patch uh, the every individual uh, the PDBs here. So if you patch uh, the container database, so it will be applied... Uh, all the pluggable databases under one container database. This right. is uh, one of the best features here. And uh, the, there is also a managed uh, databases uh, into uh, the different platforms. Mm -hmm. So how it improves the DBA's um, uh, administration? Is it easy the administration or is it increase the administration task? 
so it is uh, not going to increase the administration task here. It is going to reduce the administration task. So how and why? Because uh, so as we know, uh, uh, we have seen the previous version of the Oracle 12C. So in case if I want to upgrade for one particular database, right? So I have right. to, uh, if you consider I have a 10 databases, so I need to upgrade for 10 databases for 10 indi individual times. So that is uh, the 10 times I have to allocate the, the time and allocate my effort. But whereas in 12C, it is not that. So if I'm upgrading to one container and database, so your time consumption is reduced here. And also the major thing is in uh, the Oracle 12C, which is a multi-talent architecture, it uh, they reduces the resources. So here the resources will be shared, that resources are memories, uh, the memory and the background process. Mm -hmm. Right, right, very good. So the next, uh, which I wanted to have uh, the brief about the, the types of databases. So when I say it is a type of the databases, we have the, the container database. So that is the, the major, uh, the role of the, uh, the container database is uh, uh, to perform the, uh, the container level to reduce the, the management cost. And we have the seed database. Seed database is the default uh, the PDB databases when it is it acts as a template in our uh, uh, container database. So in case if I want to create uh, any pluggable databases, so so the seed databases will be used as a template to create the pluggable databases. So now what is the pluggable databases here? Pluggable, pluggable databases is uh, where uh, the set of a schemas or object or a non-schema object that can be plugged or unplugged to the container database and managed within the container. Any uh, and anti any and any many of the uh, pluggable databases. So there are the major core components of the uh, multi-tenant architecture. The core component of the multi-tenant architecture is CDB instance. So right. under the CDB instance, we have the root container and uh, we have the seed. And also we have the uh, multiple pluggable databases. So when I say it is a CDB instance, so what is the CDB instance does here? CDB instance is the container database instance that are completely similar to an instance into a non-CDBs. And uh, it owns as a, uh, the sys user of an instance. So in the previous version of the Oracle, and it is completely managed through an uh, SP file. Mm -hmm. And whatever the parameters which we are going to change, which we are going to modify within the pluggable databases can be applied. So it is on uh, the CDB instance. So when I say it is a CDB root, CDB root is a very first container that gets created on the container database and uh, it has a default name of uh, the CDB of a root. So whereas in the CDB root, uh, uh, which, can, uh, uh, which does not contain any table spaces that stores the user data here, so whereas in the root. And uh, this, uh, the root container is, uh, uh, it's nothing but as a system system it contains the information, all the pluggable databases associated with it. So the next we have the seed container. When I say it is a seed container, as I told you before, seed is a, a default of pluggable databases. So uh, whereas in the seed, uh, the user uh, default pluggable databases, and it is in the form of a read-only format. So seed is, is completely onto a read-only format. So it is not in a read-write mode. And also you cannot able to drop the C databases. So it is a default because when we are trying to create a, the container database at the same time, the seeds gets created. So there is a no permission where we can able to drop the C databases. Now we came into the pluggable databases. This is our major, uh, uh, the role of uh, the DBA, you know, the DBA are more interested in it uh, for the container data, uh, for the, uh, the pluggable databases. So what are the pluggable databases here? The reason for this pluggable database are the user creations. So uh, that can hold the, uh, the business related data. Like example, as I've mentioned you as a, as a sales uh, the database, right? And we have right. mentioned you as the, uh, uh, the Oracle warehouse database. Right. So these are the two different databases, right? So which can be exist on one particular uh, container database. Similarly, where we can have uh, the uh, 252 pluggable databases in one container database. That is the major, uh, the most uh, advantages uh, uh, on uh, Oracle 12C multi-tenant architecture. Right, right. right. And uh, there is also a concept of uh, the unplugging and unplugging of the uh, the uh, the content, uh, the pluggable databases, as I've told you, where we can able to plug from the one uh, pluggable databases and can be uh, 
un unplugged from one container uh, databases and can be placed into the another uh, container database easily. So also there is a relocate uh, of the pluggable databases can be also be occurred here. Refreshing of the pluggable databases can also be uh, done as a refreshing is nothing but as we are trying to clone. So when you consider uh, uh, we have a, to clone one uh, pluggable databases on same container database. Can we do it? Yes, of course we can do it by using the concept of refreshable pluggable databases. And uh, finally, just uh, wanted to share you some of the common uh, entities between the CDB and PDBs. So when I say it is a CDBs, I've, I've told you as a background process and the riddle log files and the memory structures, control files, Oracle metadata, temporary table space and undo table space. These are the, the common entities which is going to be shared on uh, the container database. So what are the common entities which is going to be shared on the uh, pluggable databases. So those common entities are a table space uh, for the applications table and indexes and the local temporary table spaces which is going to be sh shared on the, uh, the pluggable, data pluggable databases and the local users and the local roles and local metadata which is uh, specific for their applications and uh, the pluggable databases which can be managed uh, on their particular resources uh, in uh, the common entities of the pluggable databases. So what I can conclude uh, on to this particular small uh, overview of the multi-talent architecture is, uh, so this multi-talent architecture is uh, one of the biggest uh, recent changes in an Oracle database. And uh, the explanations, what we have given us, uh, the explanation should help us uh, in taking up to the first level into the new, into the new journey of the container and uh, the pluggable databases. So any questions you can uh, ask me. Thank you so much, Mir Sayed. I think that was a very excellent uh, you know, overview on that one. And then we, if we summarize it, uh, you know, it gives you isolation and agility, with the economies of scale with the architecture of multi-tenant architecture. You know, it's self-contained mm -hmm. PDP for each application, application runs unchanged, cloning is very you know, easily, very good, excellent overview to our all the audience and listeners. And I think uh, it helps uh, from architectural point of view, from a HA, I think, backup or point of view, or even shared memory, I think, and background processes. From multiple applications can be on the same server. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Now, if, Thank you. if someone wants to, a fresh college graduate, and if he wanted to learn on Oracle technologies or he wanted to start a career as an IT, so being, you know, experienced, uh, in, in information technology and primarily having a professional experience working on a number of organizations, what you suggest them, what are your, your key takeaways that they should consider to, to embark their journey on the online information technology or maybe learning on, on Oracle technology? Uh, first and first most, uh, what I can say is uh, those who are interested to uh, learn onto the administration part or onto a development part of the on the Oracle technology. So uh, it is it is of their own interest. It is not something like a force where uh, okay you just go and learn this, uh, you will get a job, while you get a uh, the good response uh, with the organizations or uh, so and so. It is of main thing is main criteria for uh, the self. Uh, the interest that is what uh, the main concern so uh, and uh, of course uh, the oracle is uh, one of the biggest organizations across the globe and it has uh, the the lot of benefits and which um, uh, gives you a wide and it's like an ocean uh, for learning the different technologies under the uh, the platform of the oracle so uh, that's the one which i would be able to suggest for the newcomers or those who wants to keen to learn the oracle technology right right and have you also started your your learning journey to autonomous database or how you or it's not just yeah mm -hmm. yeah recently i've started uh, with the uh, the oracle 18c and uh, now i'm trying to upgrade it to the uh, uh, oracle uh, autonomous database of uh, the 19c and uh, much more very good excellent so thank you so much, Mir Sayed. And uh, for our audience listener, if they want to reach to Mir Sayed Hassan and his website name is mirsayedhassan.com and I will put it in the show notes and uh, feel free to reach him for any, any help, any assistance required on Oracle database 
Femi, he's an expert in his field. And as we can can see and listen from his experience, which he's managing the production databases. And this is very important that when you are starting your career, when you get a hands-on experience and after that, you need to manage the production databases. And if you see, we are living in a, you know, COVID-19 or Corona where all these IT guys or IT teams who are spending their days and nights managing the systems or the databases round the clock to make sure that each and every technology is available for even our kids learning, even for healthcare workers, for even more earning the government. I think that's the great work everyone is doing behind the scene, which is not known to, to the people uh, that that's what we can, can give them the, you know, ex- ex- tribute or excellent work. That's what we can give back to the community. Thank you so much, Mir Sayed. Any, any concluding comments? Yeah, you're for- most welcome. All right. All right. Yeah, you're most welcome. Thank you so much. And uh, you guys can reach me out at any, at any, at any time. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the O Tech Talks podcast and be part of Tech Talks at otechtalks.tv. It's a turf to share ideas, insights, and innovations.